Wait, is this just gate? Chapter 232. Written by Pepper Antique. Reports of individuals performing feats of so-called magic have been on the rise wreck. Click. A young woman in one of India's mountain refugee camps spraying fire from her hands to fend of. Click. Erting groups concerned that lingering radiation from the wars may be cause. Click. Has our world seen the birth of true superheroes? Click. Colonel Mohammed turned the TV off with an angry press of the red button on its remote. Fucking. Idiots. She thought. They're trying to bottle lightning and now we're all dealing with the repercussions. She'd been waiting in the small, but still nice, hotel room for nearly three hours now. She wanted to leave. Not to run away or cause problems, but just because she felt cooped up. It didn't help that there was a hipster-looking little coffee shop just across the street that she could see from her window. She disliked those kinds of shops. But she couldn't deny their affinity for their craft. She wondered if they'd put her in this room because of its view of the shop, to taunt her. The door rang with the knocking of a fist, likely those of the MP. Stationed outside. Colonel. We've been given the go-ahead. Our car will be leaving in twenty minutes. The man's voice said. Understood. She replied, standing up as she did. She walked over to the nearby bed and picked up the jacket of her dress uniform, inspecting it one more time before she put it on. Then she stepped into the dress shoes that completed the uniform and grabbed her hat off of the nearby chair. Ready. She said through the door. It beeped with the keycard activation of its lock, then it opened onto the hallway outside. The 2M.P.S escorted her out to the waiting black SUV and they drove to the hearing. Thirty minutes later it pulled up outside of the new congressional building, it had been rebuilt after the war. She could see the Pentagon only a few blocks away. She placed her hat on her head and straightened it, then stepped out into the light drizzle. On the upside. Vilayri said before grunting with exertion. I think we may have figured out how the agency's doors work. She wrenched on the piece of rope tied around Joey's left ankle. Or at least something similar. And so you cut my son in half? Margaret Choi said as she held Joey under his arms, keeping him in place. He's not cut in half. V. Lyrie attempted to assure her. He's simply. Uh. Physically dislocated from his legs. She managed to get the movement she needed and pulled the restraint off. Get ready. He should be loose. Now. Pull. Margaret and the king pulled her from his armpits, and the king from where his arm was inside the bottomless entrance. Joey practically launched out of the opening in the wall and crashed down on top of both of them. As soon as she'd recovered she picked him up and began inspecting his waist and legs. Once she was satisfied with his wholeness, she grabbed the lobe of his ear and wrenched back, pulling his head at a slight angle. Joseph Choi. She hissed into the offending lobe. What were you thinking? She asked. Ow. Mom we were just experimenting with a new idea. It wasn't supposed to get me stuck like that. He said rapidly as he bent over to relieve the pain in his ear. And you. She half yelled as she looked at Vilayri, who was tempted to cower behind the king's awkwardly watching form. How can you just have my son step into a magic hole without testing it first? Um. We did test it first. V. Lyrie said hesitantly. We placed several items, and one test rodent, in it. They all came out the other side just fine. They did? The king asked curiously. Can you show me? Of course sir. V. Lyrie said, suddenly excited about the project again despite Mrs. Choi's anger. Not with my son you won't. Margaret said, reminding them of her presence as she released Joey's ear. Mom. It's fine. Joey cut in. I just went through too slowly. No. She scolded. No experiments that put you at risk. Moom. He exclaimed. I'm learning magic. Half of the lessons put me at risk. He realized the error of his statement as he was saying it. Then you are no longer learning magic. 
she said sternly as she stared him down. Joey's hands flew to his ears, a coping habit he'd had since he was a child, one that they'd thought he had grown past, though it still popped up from time to time when he was stressed or overwhelmed. Her expression softened almost immediately as she saw him turn away from her. Can he please? V. Lyrie asked softly. Margaret looked over at the small mage, who she knew her son had a crush on. V. Lyrie wasn't hiding anymore, but actually looked like she was worried. He's quite brilliant. She continued. His mind. It works like I've never seen before. And he's very creative. She pointed at the opening they'd just pulled him from. In only a day of looking at my notes he figured out a potential solution to the blight. She looked at the king, who wore a shocked expression from the statement. And, he may have figured out the solution to long-distance travel using the same concept. Just like the agency used. She looked back at Mrs. Choi. And he doesn't even have a full grasp of magical theory yet. Margaret looked over to where Joey was standing, facing away from her with his hands on his ears and humming. Though she noticed that the humming was much quieter than it usually was when he got like this. He was listening to them despite being upset, one of the things they'd worked on when he was like this. She walked up behind him and placed her hands over his for just a second before removing them, an old sign that she wanted him to listen for a moment. He lifted his hands from his ears just a tiny bit. You came up with all this miho? She asked. These were your ideas? He didn't speak, simply nodding his head up and down once. She took a deep breath then repeated the signal to listen. You can keep learning magic. She said, though her voice was laden with concern. She turned back to Vilari and the king. But no using my son as a guinea pig. She said to them sternly. I don't know what that is. Vilari admitted. But I think I understand the concept. We. Oui. She nodded to Joey. We'll be more careful in the future. In a display that she'd grown used to from previous arguments with her son, Joey spun around quickly and hugged her. Thank you mom. He said into her ear. And as quickly as that he'd released her back onto the ground and began explaining the concept of the openings to both her and the king. She sighed, marveling at how unpredictable both of her sons could be now. She looked over at the small mage who was the fascination of her younger son. Don't hurt my boy. She thought to herself as she absently listened to Joey's explanation, his face only showing excitement and none of the former upset it had had only moments before. Oh God. Why do I feel so tired? He thought as he opened his eyes. I just woke up. I shouldn't feel like this. As he slowly brought everything into focus he looked around. The room looked familiar, and yet not quite right. Is this a hospital? Why am I in a hospital? But that wasn't quite right either. The bed and all the white fixtures around him were right. That was hospital style. But the ceiling above him looked like it was made of grey stone. And the furniture itself looked like some kind of old school wooden stuff from a farm or something. He looked around a bit more. There wasn't an IV. In his arm. There were no digital readouts anywhere. He looked at a wall. There weren't even any power outlets. What the fuck? He wondered as he tried to lift himself up. Pain shot through his body as he tried to engage his abdominal muscles. A. He cried out in shock through gritted teeth as pain coursed through him. What was that? He heard from somewhere outside the room. Druid Manis, please go check. It sounded like it came from room 5, though I hope not. The voice sounded odd to him. As if it was being spoken through some kind of musical instrument instead of a human throat and vocal cords. He tried to roll over, his legs kicking feebly as he once again felt pain flow outward from his stomach. HHHNNNNG. He groaned as he fell back. His head was spinning from a combination of fatigue and overwhelming pain. It is from room 5. Someone just outside the door yelled. He's awake. Send for the mistress, and the ambassador. The door opened with a hearty wooden noise. Batista looked up and was shocked to see someone with what looked like deer antlers sprouting from their head. What the fuck? 
he asked as he felt himself pass out. Mr. Batista. They yelled as they rushed forward. Mr. Batista. It's going to be all a dash. Then he was back out.